All right, so you see all the little, little patches between these trees. I'm not trying to get too seduced by the detail. I want to use my eraser at a slightly low opacity. Keep some of it, but allow other parts to remain and stay obscured. And that's looking pretty good. Keeping the big picture in mind. These other areas where the temple goes into the rocks, this is kind of a more interesting place to blend. And this is an opportunity to show another kind of new tool. Because I have a lot of shadow on the rock here, and this is brighter, I could just use levels to darken the whole temple, like so. But instead, I like how bright the temple is on this edge, and that fits, but I, I want to darken it a little bit back here at this edge. So, what I can do is use a selective levels tool. And they're under this little cupped hand or what looks like a black lollipop. These are the dodge and burn tools. And burn is the one I'm going to use here on the midtones at an exposure always less than 20. You set your brush just like you would for an eraser, but this will darken selectively on that layer. So I can darken the shadows just on this layer to help it match the lighting of what's around it. And you're going to see I'm going to need to do quite a bit of that on that waterfall too. So just making everything kind of work. And these are the photography tools within Photoshop adjusting the existing pixels. And they can make quite a, quite a difference. So I'm using burn, which darkens, help bring out this architecture a little bit more, make this, this porch area, this peristyle, look more prominent. And if I go back in my history, you'll see all those burn tools I just used, a lot of them, without them, big difference. So a simple tool, but incredibly helpful. On the flip side of that is the dodge tool, the black lollipop. Same sort of settings, exposure always less than 20, because it's a very, very strong tool. Very soft brush. And now I can just bring little selective highlights in. I'm only ever going to affect the midtones, otherwise you get to white and black, and you don't want to ruin your reference. And I can brighten up the midtones in certain parts to help model the lighting even more. So it's catching light maybe right on this top edge. On the roof line it's catching light. And then you can burn back if you do it too much. Now, if you're really worried about using some of these tools, you can always make a duplicate and then do these effects on the duplicate layer and then blend them in with opacity on layers behind. But I think, I think that helps a lot. So if I go back before all the dodging and burning, this is why we remember at least 200 history states. That really helps that temple kind of emerge. I might have overdone it a little bit on those roof lines. Okay. So now, just polishing the uh, and perfecting the puzzle pieces, right? Some don't look so great. Now this piece, that's looking okay. But this edge, not so much. This edge, not so much. And so, I don't have anything behind it to blend, so I'm going to use my 
clone stamp at a higher opacity, target my area, and bring some of these textures down. Just because this layer is on top of the, the other layer. It's not a super high opacity. I want to blend them together. But it's enough that I can make the seams disappear. And then I'm definitely going to play with the color of this waterfall as well. So that's kind of nice. I like the warmth underneath, but let's play with the adjustments of that waterfall layer. Color balance. Not so much blue in the midtones. Not so much, or not so much yellow. Not so much yellow in the highlights. More red. It's really the yellows and the midtones that are making it tough. And then the shadows, yeah, less blue. <laughs> there we go. Maybe less red as well. It looks more mossy. And when in doubt, push it both ways and see which one is getting you closer to where you want to be. See, I think I'm going to move the waterfall up, so command right bracket. And then I think I'm going to erase away from it much more forcibly. So 100% reveal the temple behind it. That way I can use some of its foliage to help mask elements that are less successful. Here, let's get rid of this layer for the time being. So there's just lots and lots of creative decisions, which is why we're trying to limit it to only five major components. Because each one takes a lot of care. to do well. Yeah, it takes a lot of work for Photoshop. It's having trouble catching up with me here. All right. So zooming in, you see that now I can blend into those cliffs a little bit better. And I can maybe take the opacity down. And that helps merge these colors together all the more. too much too early. Let me fix that. Now man-made structures have to follow more logic than organics. So I can't just have that temple fade into trees if it's overlapping the trees, right? I have to make it feel more believable than that. But just a few man-made structures like I've included will really help sell the space, the illusion of the space.
I'm going to leave that. It's kind of cool coming out of the, the rock. All right. I worked on that arch here or the entryway. I want to use it. I want to show it. Now it has this foliage in front of it. Use a little bit of this more selectively. Show the arch, but also show a little bit of those like there's a little tree growing inside of it. All right. Again, trying to think of the big picture. So that's looking pretty nice. Yeah. It's all coming together. Now other parts of my sketch, let's see, it's, it'd be silly not to be informed by your process and by what, what you start liking that you're doing. So it's not that I have to use every element, as long as I have five, and I might decide to shift my composition a little bit so it doesn't have much of this stuff anymore. And for the sake of time, I think I'm going to need to do that. What I like about commercial art and its, its requirement and <laughs> the reason digital skills are so, so necessary for commercial art, for our visual world, is that there are deadlines. Things have to get done. It's not just all experimental. And that makes you kind of commit, make stronger decisions. So I'm going to quickly, I'm glad I want to have a foreground, a middle ground, a background. But they might change from my sketch a little bit, and that's just fine. start bringing these in front and then I'm racing away from them with more opacity because I, I now have more confidence of what's behind them There's the final piece back there. 